Silicon is an integral part of our society. It is a main component in our modern technology such as computer chips in our phones and laptops. Silicon also plays a significant role in the renewable energy sector as a key component in solar cells. Before we can utilize silicon for our favorite 21st century gadgets, it has to be obtained and refined first. Luckily, silicon makes up 90% of the Earth's crust in the form of silica, or silicates, in other words, sand. There are two standard cleaning procedures. The first process utilizes charcoal and high temperatures upwards of 2000 degrees Celsius to abstract impurities and oxygen from silicon dioxide. The resulting silicon is of 98% purity. The Siemens process. This process involves the addition of silicon with hydrochloric acid to form trichlorosilane and hydrogen gas. Those products are combined together in uh, degrees of 1100 Celsius for 10 total days. And this will form the products of pure silicon and hydrochloric acid. The purity will be around 99.999% purity. The second process utilizes silicon wafers obtained from the first cleaning and further removes impurities. This yields silicon of 99.99% purity. This process is known as a Siemens process. In the Siemens process, silicon is reacted with three equivalents of hydrochloric acid and yields trichlorosilane and hydrogen gas. The trichlorosilane is further reacted with hydrogen gas at 1100 degrees Celsius for 10 days. This yields semiconductor grade silicon and three equivalents of hydrochloric acid. The Siemens process is used to prepare silicon for semiconductor applications such as in computer chips. Day two. Day three. One week later. One of the most common applications of silicon is in solar panels. The panels can absorb energy via the photovoltaic effect. The photovoltaic effect essentially takes incoming light to excite charge carriers such as electrons and holes in PN doped panels. When these electrons and holes combine, it is energetically favorable and energy is released as a product. This energy is what we harvest and use to power our electrical needs. Doping is the process of replacing a silicon atom with another. In this example, boron is used and it will create an electron hole as boron has less electrons. Next, phosphorus is used. This element has extra electrons and will add additional electrons to the system. Boron is known as p-type doping as it creates a positive environment. And phosphorus is known as n-type doping as it creates a negative system. On the right side, we have our N side, which has an extra electron. On the left, we have our P side, which lacks an electron. As our light source comes in, it gives our electron enough energy to pair with the hole. This results in energy.